The Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 White is pretty much identical with the regular Shadow Rock 3, only that this cooler has an all white coating applied on most of the heatsink. While the regular Shadow Rock 3 has a price of around 49.99 US dollars or euros, this all white variant can be acquired for around 59.99 US dollars or euros, which is roughly 10 US dollars or euros more expensive than the regular one just for the color alone. The Shadow Rock 3 White Edition is a mid tire air CPU cooler that is designed to offer a good cooling performance and also a good clearance for the RAM modules on the motherboard. And the way it does this, the clearance I mean, is by using a heatsink which has a heavy offset design. As I said in the previous review of the Shadow Rock 3, the best way to have a good RAM module clearance is to move the whole cooler away from the RAM slots of the motherboard. One of the immediate issues present on this cooler is the exact same issue present on the regular Shadow Rock 3, which is the complete lack of space behind the heatsink for a second fan, even though Be Quiet has included an extra pair of fan mounting clips. This happens thanks to the before mentioned offset design, which while it does increase the memory clearance, it also pushes the cooler so far back that a secondary fan would be almost impossible to install without creating issues at least in my system, which uses a fairly big case. It's not a massive oversight, but it is something that you should keep in mind, especially if you're not using a bigger case than average. The cooler itself uses a total of 5 copper-made heat pipes, each having an auto diameter of 6mm. These, as stated before, are made from copper, however, as opposite to the regular variant of this cooler, these heat pipes are covered by the same all-white made coating as the rest of the heatsink. One thing that must be noted about the Shadow Rock 3 in general, and not just the white one, is that it has a top plate on the heatsink, which is meant to cover the endings of the heat pipes. This is a pretty efficient way of covering up the uneven ends of the heat pipes. Also, this top plate does look quite good and adds a bit of character to the design of the cooler. These heat pipes make direct contact with the surface of the CPU. In fact, the heat pipes themselves are basically creating the base plate of the cooler. This side of the heat pipes is also made as flat as possible to ensure a good contact with the thermal compound and the CPU surface. Unfortunately, no matter how flat the heat pipes can be made, a solid base plate made from copper will always be a better contact surface on the CPU. Above the base plate of the cooler, there is a small heatsink that will provide some passive cooling. Well, that's not really the main goal of that heatsink, to be completely honest. Those heatsink like fins are actually placed there to attach the main mounting beam of the cooler. Basically, while it does look like a heatsink and it may provide some passive cooling, it is in fact designed to be part of the mounting system itself and nothing else. Just to be clear. The fan used with the Shadow Rock 3 White is the same fan used on the regular cooler, as in the identical fan, not a white variant or anything. And before you get your hands on a Christmas themed pitchfork, allow me to explain why they did this in the first place. You see, if they were to get a white fan installed on an all-white heatsink, then the cooler would look like the generic all-white air CPU coolers that we can find on questionable websites. Thus, the black regular Silent Wing series fan helps with the easy brand recognition of the cooler itself. And now that we've settled this, the fan itself is a Shadow Wings 2 PWM model and has a maximum speed of 1600 RPM and a minimum speed of 300 RPM. The fan has its cable covered by high quality sleeving and uses a 4 pin connector for the power. The fan also has rubber pads on the corners to not only prevent any vibrations from being passed on into the system, but also to prevent any scratches on the heatsink, especially since this heatsink is covered by a quite fragile white coating. And I'm saying fragile because, well, there isn't a coating that isn't prone to scratching and it doesn't matter who makes it and how they apply it. Now we can see what is delivered with this cooler and to keep it simple, the accessory bundle is identical with the one included with the regular Shadow Rock 3 cooler. And this one includes a user manual, a long Phillips screwdriver, a tube of thermal compound, four fan mounting clips and well, the components of the mounting system, which again includes one CPU cooler mounting bridge, a metallic backplate, screws, plastic spacers, some screws and mounting arms, among other things. The installation process for this cooler is pretty simple. We start with the backplate, then attach the required studs in the correct holes into the backplate itself. Furthermore, you have to attach the rubber washers over the studs to hold them in place on the backplate itself. 
Afterwards, the backplate goes at the back of the motherboard and then at the front of the motherboard and the CPU socket, you attach the required washers, nuts, adapters, whatever you want to call them, and then you attach the mounting arms over them, securing those with the smaller Phillips screws. Finally, you place the thermal compound on the CPU itself and then place the heatsink over the CPU. You then secure the heatsink in this position by attaching the main mounting beam over the base plate of the cooler and finally you secure the beam with the two bigger screws. Then of course you install the fan on the correct side of the heatsink and connect it to an open fan header on your motherboard. And that's pretty much it. And this is how the Shadow Rock 3 White Edition looks like installed in my testing system. Quite good actually. Although, thanks to the lenses of the camera, the white coating looks pretty similar with the silver bare metal that is found on the regular Shadow Rock 3 cooler. Just to make a point. Anyway, we start with the clearance offered by this cooler and there's good things to be said here, as the cooler and the fan assembly does not interfere at all with the RAM modules of the motherboard. The space between the sides of the cooler and the graphics card is approximately 30mm, which is okay for the most part, especially if you want to access the top mounted M.2 socket of the motherboard. Also, before you write a comment saying that it's not 30mm, keep in mind that not all motherboards have the same space between the PCI Express slots and the CPU socket. Dimensions may vary. Before we head into the testing of the cooler itself, we need to hear how it sounds like, with the included fan running at its maximum rated speed of 1600 RPM. The fan will start either completely stopped or running at its lowest speed allowed by the bearing itself. This is done to show you the actual sound you can expect from this cooler, as regular decibel measuring, while it is useful, will not offer you the complete picture in terms of the sound generated by the cooler itself. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 White has a maximum noise output of 40 decibels, with a measuring device placed at the standard distance of 10 cm away from the system and the CPU cooler. This noise value is identical with the regular Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 cooler, as both models have the same fan. Testing all CPU coolers is done using two synthetic benchmarks and the same CPU, unless otherwise stated. The CPU used is an Intel i9-9900K running both at its factory settings and also overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 software which places a load on the CPU that is similar with what you can encounter in your daily usage, especially when playing a modern AAA video game. And in this test, the Shadow Rock 3 White reached a maximum temperature of 62 degrees Celsius, with the ambient temperature held at a fixed 26 degrees Celsius. This is of course with the CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. So far, this cooler is doing pretty well. However, the second test uses the FPU stability test found within the IDA64 Extreme software. This benchmark places an unrealistically high load on the CPU, something that you will not encounter in your daily usage. In fact, the closest CPU load that you can get close to the FPU stability test in AIDA is heavy video rendering using the CPU as a main processing unit. Anyway, in this test, the Shadow Rock 3 White Edition reached a maximum temperature of 89 degrees Celsius, just like the regular variant of this cooler. And this answers one critical question. Is the white version performing worse than the regular version? The answer is no, it does not. These coolers are virtually identical in terms of performance. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 White Edition is as expected identical in performance with the regular variant of the same cooler, while also being around 10 US dollars or euros more expensive. The overall performance of this cooler is good, however, there are issues, such as the offset design which, while it does its job and prevents the cooler from interfering with the RAM kit installed in your system, it will also prevent the installation of a secondary fan at the back of the cooler, unless your case is exceptionally large. The Shadow Rock 3 White is a good mid-range CPU cooler that offers a good performance and also has a good clearance for the RAM modules despite the shortcomings of that. The noise output is ok for the most part, but it could have been lower, especially for a cooler that uses just a single 120mm fan. If you like this review, then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more, and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below you can find both the Patreon and the subscriber star links of the channel.